a macro level, we've just seen a sea change in the energy industry. I mean, when you think about it, just a few years ago, we were worried about running out of natural gas in this country, uh, and the shortages were driving up prices and was incredibly volatile. We were relying on imported oil, uh, and now we're one of the largest oil producers in the world. Our natural gas supplies uh, have just gone through the roof, uh, which has driven prices to record low levels. Uh, the use of coal uh, has been going down substantially. So when you look at the mix of energy usage in the U.S., we've seen a major change, and it's not over yet. Now, things haven't yet equalized, and we're going to see more changes in the future. Here in California, we are leading the charge on changing the energy mix in this country. Uh, we're doing that through the use of renewables, hydropower, nuclear power. Over 50 percent of the electricity we generate now comes from sources that do not emit any greenhouse gases. Uh, we see renewables continuing to grow because California has just uh, upped the ante and they've set our target to 50 percent up from 33 percent for the renewables piece of that. So we're going to continue to see renewables be a major contributor to energy supply in California and across the country. A large part of the energy structure uh, in this country and around the world was built in the post-World War II boom years. So even if technology wasn't changing, we'd have to be investing in that infrastructure. But now we also need to try and look ahead and figure out what are the technologies that we need to make sure that the grid can accommodate uh, as new applications get developed. Uh, and that's a major challenge for this industry. Uh, this industry estimates that we'll have to invest about $100 billion a year over the next 15 years in order to make the transition so that we can take advantage of these technologies. In order to accommodate new technologies, uh, we need to make sure that the grid, which was originally designed uh, as a very simple tool where electricity was supplied in one end and taken out uh, by customers on the other end, well now with these new technologies you have solar arrays, uh, inputting power at all points on the grid. Uh, you'll have things like electric vehicles taking electricity off the grid at places that uh, we're never sure exactly where those cars are going to be. And therefore, we have to monitor the grid more closely, and we have to be more flexible in how we control the grid uh, so that all of these technologies function together uh, in order to make sure that we've got the safe and reliable grid that everyone's asking for. In order to accomplish the changes uh, that need to be made in the grid, there are many people we need to partner with. The technology developers are crucial. Uh, every day, uh, somebody has some new idea about how they can use energy more efficiently or how they can supply it in a very different way. We're not a technology developer, but we have to make sure that we understand how those new technologies are going to impact us so then, then we can redesign our grid to uh, accommodate them. Uh, we also have to partner with the regulatory agencies, both the federal and state regulatory agencies, because while technology changes fast, the regulatory environment that we've operated in for decades and decades may not be able to change as fast. Uh, and so we have to work on those sorts of policy changes as well as the technical changes. We're investing in our grid to make it a 21st century grid. We call it the grid of things. And the way you can think about it is kind of like what happened with the internet. And the internet has had to evolve to be faster, more responsive, uh, to take security into account. And so our vision is that on the electric grid, we're going to see the same sort of evolution. And we call it the grid of things. It's investing in new technologies to take account of all of the inventions that are going to be driving a growth in the future of the use of electricity. PG&E supplies 16 million Californians with energy. That's one in 20 Americans. And today if we ask them, so what do they think about when they think of PG&E, we want them to think about safe, reliable, and affordable service. I'd also add a fourth word and that would be clean. Uh, and while we're seeing tremendous changes in the environment today, we're seeing tremendous changes in technology, 10 years from now, 50 years from now, the words that I want them to describe the company as is safer, more reliable, more affordable, and cleaner. One of the unique things about utilities is we are inextricably linked to the communities that we serve in. You know, unlike other companies, we can't pick up and leave and go somewhere else. 
And so our success is linked to the health and success of the communities uh, we live in. Uh, and therefore, we focus on what it is that we can do to make these communities economically viable. One of the ways that we're able to communicate with our customers is when they see us in action in their communities. Uh, and there have been a number of examples over the last couple of years where that sea of blue trucks has been the best communications vehicle we have. So one of the technologies that uh, we've put in place is using electric vehicles for some of our uh, work trucks. And part of that is we're able to export power from the trucks because they have large batteries because they're electric vehicles. Uh, well, in some of the fires, the infrastructure of the towns, including some of the first aid clinics that were needed, uh, were without power. And we were able to plug them into these trucks that have the exportable power and really form a great partnership with the community. These electric technologies that we're using to help in emergency situations, like our trucks with exportable power, uh, actually will have day-to-day -day usage in the future. We envision every truck in our fleet being able to drive into your neighborhood and where you have a power outage to be able to get you back as soon as our truck arrives. The crews then can work on repairing uh, the problem permanently and you will never know that uh, you had more than a, a couple of minute outage because we've had these trucks available that can supply a home or a whole neighborhood. It, it really is a game changer in terms of how we engage with customers. So my one wish for technology, and this is very personal, is I just wish everybody would use the same type of charger.